Uh, I think it's probably the amount of organisations that I work with every day. Um, I'm not just working for one broadcaster, I work for mostly 70 public service broadcasters um, and that comes with its own challenges, uh, different countries, different geopolitical um, considerations but also different types of content. Um, a lot of people are working on more news relevant content, uh, you know, things from Gaza, maybe things from Ukraine. Um, but then there's another people behind that then who are looking at content that might not necessarily be as part of the news agenda, might be lighter type content. Um, so it's a good mix, but it's the volume of broadcasters with the volume of, of social media content that we see is the main challenge. Yeah, I think, you know, the EBU um, and its members um, parted ways with the, the Russian members uh, nearly over two years ago now since the invasion of, of uh, Ukraine happened. We also had an issue with our Belarusian member um, and we're still very focused on the idea of protecting press freedom and uh, making sure that uh, our public service broadcasters have the right to be able to report um, without the fear of repercussions um, with the ability to be able to tell the stories in, the, in a factual way. Um, that's a challenge for all public service broadcasters, I think, to be able to have that independence um, from external forces who maybe uh, have an agenda that they want public service media to push. Uh, I think it's a challenge for not just public service media, but also for commercial uh, organisations. Um, I think in terms of the narratives that people are, are seeing, you know, a lot of the big ones that we're seeing at the moment along is, the, uh, is migration. is a huge uh, topic. Uh, has been so for the last decade, especially in Europe. Uh, we've seen a number of countries um, have very tough lines in terms of the content they've, uh, that they've been producing based on what they see happening. But we've also seen a lot of interference from far-right parties uh, trying to push um, the conversation into a different sphere, into one that disrupts the public discourse. Um, most recently, I think we've seen, especially around the European elections coming up, we're seeing a lot of uh, information around uh, farmers. We've seen a lot of protests across uh, many parts of Europe in the last number of months, uh, in my own country, in Ireland as well. Um, and a lot of this is feeding off uh, misinformation that's coming, uh, circulating online, which is drawing people into a conversation um, that they might not necessarily know the full facts behind. I think that um, we've seen it going back as far as, as 2013 um, when we saw the first uh, entrance into, into Crimea where um, the Russian in, uh, internet agency was producing um, content that, uh, should we say, furthered the interests of the, of the, of the Kremlin. Um, and we've seen that continue as well across into other conflicts and into other uh, spaces like the presidential elections in 2016 and 2020 um, and we've seen it again uh, following the invasion of Ukraine where content that we see is proje projecting um, uh, one incident is being completely distorted and um, made to look like uh, Ukrainian propaganda. I'll give you an example, there was um, a video which is quite famous now, it was known on Russian social media as the moving corpse. It was a video showing, um, actually showing a protest in Austria, in Vienna, and it was uh, an environmental protest where the people were lying under tarps uh, and one person moved, but that was actually taken by, uh, by Russian-affiliated accounts made to look like this was actually happening in Ukraine with the narrative that Ukrainians were lying about the amount of people that were, were dying in the, uh, in the conflict. So this is the kind of thing that we're seeing. It's important when you are working on stories or looking at content like this that you understand first of all where it's coming from. Um, we have a rule of three at the EBU which is the idea of our verification um, process is very strict. Uh, we look at the source, the date and the location. Uh, we try and establish those to 100% with the idea of being un understand, you know, where this content is coming from, where it was shot and what date it was filmed upon. But the most important one actually for us is the source. Trying to understand um, 
not just if they're the copyright holder of the material, but if they are actually have an agenda or they have what is their motivation for sharing the content. So they are the kind of indicators that we look like look for, but they're not anything different from the, the normal journalistic work that we'd be doing.